Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with pork agridolce. That's right, we're doing Italian sweet and sour pork. Although I guess translated literally, it would be sour sweet pork. But either way, this came out incredibly delicious. And even though I did this because it was freezing out, and I was craving something slow roasted and comforting, ironically, it reminded me of something that's more associated with the summer months. And why that is is going to be apparent in a few moments. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with our braising liquid, which will also eventually be our sauce. And we'll go ahead and begin that with some tomato paste, followed by some vinegar, and not one but two kinds, including some beautiful aged balsamic vinegar, as well as some good old-fashioned plain white distilled vinegar, which as you know we add when we want to increase the acidity without adding any more flavor. And then once we have our aggro covered, we'll move on to the dolce, and we'll go ahead and add a nice big drizzle of honey, and in case you're keeping score at home, I think that was orange blossom honey. But for something like this, I think anything's going to work. And then, believe it or not, we will follow that with one mashed up anchovy filet. Which might be a little bit surprising. Unless you've watched this channel before. Then it's not. And then we'll also want to add a little bit of sliced green onion. As well as some finely minced or crushed garlic. And then, because it goes so amazingly well with roasted pork, we'll toss in a little bit of finely and freshly chopped rosemary. And then we'll finish up by seasoning with some kosher salt, a ton of red chili flakes, and then last but not least, some freshly ground black pepper. And that's it. We can grab a whisk and give our agridolce a nice mix. And basically what we just made here is sort of an Italian barbecue sauce, which is what I was referring to earlier when I said this sort of reminded me of something we'd eat during the summer. All right, we got your sweet, your sour, your savory, your salty, your spicy. And this really would work beautifully with whatever you'd put a barbecue sauce on including, of course, pork, which is what we're using today. So we'll set that aside while we move on to cut up some pork shoulder, also humorously referred to as pork butt. And what we'll attempt to do is cut this into about three inch pieces. And don't pull a muscle trying to get them exact. All right, just get them close. That's all we ask. And by the way, the reason we're choosing pork shoulder is because as you can probably see, it's very well marbled with fat. Plus it has a lot of delicious connective tissue. So it really does shine in these braised slower cooked dishes. And then what we'll do once our pork is portioned is transfer that into our bowl and give it the old sauce toss. And for this, I really do recommend using your hands, especially if no one's watching. All right, there has never been a meat and sauce mixer invented that outdoes the bare hands. So we will get in there and get in there deep. And we will keep mixing and massaging until we're confident everything is thoroughly coated. Although fair warning, this feels so good, even after it's mixed, you might go a few extra seconds. And by the way, there is nothing wrong with that. And then what we'll do once our pork has been agridolced is transfer that into a lightly olive oil baking dish. And we'll go ahead and spread that out nice and evenly. And that's it. Once we have that arranged to our liking, we will transfer that uncovered into the center of a 325 degree oven for about two and a half to three hours or until tender. And then if you want about halfway through that cooking time, we should probably pull that out and flip the pieces over. And if you're wondering what would happen if you didn't, probably not that much. But by giving these pieces a flip about halfway through, we'll get some nice even browning. And both sides of the pork will spend about the same amount of time in that braising liquid. So that's what I did. And I went ahead and popped that back in for another hour and a half or so. Until I felt it was perfectly cooked. And what we're shooting for here is something that's very tender, but not falling apart. So we will test that with a fork. And it should pierce that meat fairly easily. And if it doesn't, put it back in. And by the way, if you do have to cook yours longer, and your agridolce seems like it might be drying out, just add a splash of water. But mine was perfect, which meant it was ready to serve. Speaking of which, we're going to have to decide whether we're going to skim the fat off before we do that. All right, depending on who you talk to, that's either a great idea or the worst idea ever. And personally, I usually skim off some, but not all of it. Which reminds me, I'm going to give you a couple tips and tricks about how to do that in the blog post. But anyway, that's going to be your call. I mean, you are after all the dolce and gabbana of achieving agridolce nirvana. And speaking of experiencing pure bliss, it might look like I served this up on polenta, which would have been a beautiful choice. But I'm actually serving this on top of ricotta mashed potatoes, which were insanely good, and I should probably do a video for that. But anyway, I finished up with some sliced green onion, and that's it, my pork agridolce was ready to enjoy. So I grabbed a fork and spoon to dig in, and I'm very happy to report this was everything I had hoped for, and more. Okay, just plain chunks of pork shoulder, roasted until just tender is going to taste really good. 
But when it's been braised in that super savory sweet and sour sauce, we've produced something that's profoundly satisfying and delicious. And of course, infinitely adaptable. Since you can switch in and out all kinds of different vinegars and spices and herbs and sweeteners. So I'll almost be a little bit disappointed if you make it exactly like this. But if you do, it really will be fantastic. But anyway, that's it. My take on pork agrodolce. I'm not sure exactly what my friends in Italy would think of me calling this Italian barbecue sauce. But minus the smokiness, that really is what this was reminiscent of. And as I was enjoying this, I was already brainstorming about things to do with this once the weather warms up and we do fire up the grill. And I kind of hope you're doing the same. But anyway, regardless of the season or any specific reason, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.